Alright, um, we will see if the, I'll go over uh, some of the questions that I had. And I just gotta finish this stuff though real quick. And I'll go over the questions that were sent to the email. And then um, I'm gonna go over on in this one. I'm gonna go over uh, a fast way for you to uh, animate a walking sequence. But I gotta finish this before I get in trouble here. Not trouble, but <laughs> I want to finish it before a certain time of day. Um, I appreciate the questions and the uh, the engagement. I'm going to try to put a lot of this on YouTube because it looks like there are followers there. It's not many, but so if this is on the YouTube. If you have any questions about, um, I guess mostly Moho. Or Inkscape, you can send those to the email. Uh, it's niatric, it's N I I I A T R E C at gmail.com. And then, whatever questions you have about uh, like interesting stuff I really don't go into because there's not much I can really say except there's a lot of people out there with a lot of projects it's a lot better for uh, a couple of people from what I'm hearing because now you got the option of putting your yourself out there on YouTube or so many platforms that you can go to I'm the main one what or the main suggestion would be there are so many uh, websites for animators where there's a lot of different like competitions and it doesn't have to be like a full feature or anything it could be I don't know five some of them are really short they're like three minutes five minutes that's a good way to get your your stuff out there uh, I would say YouTube for the most I mean it's kind of hard on YouTube because if you're not paying for like their uh, YouTube's advertising uh, kit you're not gonna get a lot of eyeballs unless someone just comes across your your um, your your YouTube page and if it's good enough I guess people subscribe or watch it but if you're trying to get like the kind of eyeballs you need for someone that's to kind of put put yourself in the the I guess the glow of someone that would they're like, hey, we can give this guy money and we can make money off of his artwork. Uh, you want to try to get it out there. I mean, YouTube's good. If you have money to spend on advertising for YouTube, they'll get your, your, your stuff out there. It'll see a lot of eyeballs. But my recommendation is always any kind of like fund or any kind of platform that is geared to animators or what they call showcasing um, there's so many ways you can do that most of the people that I well I don't know because a lot of uh, I don't really know them but the, some people that I speak to if you're able to get into some of these showcases uh, or get sponsored by someone that's a good way to do it maybe I don't know if you have someone that is and your family member that you know knows anything about you know creating projects that's a good way to speak to or call people because a lot of these uh, these companies don't really I don't think they get a lot of people that are coming to them saying you know hey uh, I, most of the time it's at conventions but I'm talking about like the I want to say low level but the people that are the, the ones that are doing like the basic drawings the concept stuff like that that's a good way to, to kind of get your stuff out there. Um, of course, if you go to Twitter, try to con you can try to contact some of those people on Twitter. 
I don't recommend going to like the, you know, I want to talk to, you know, Bob Iger. No, it's lower level ones that can kind of guide you into getting into the field of doing projects. And from my experience or what I see is it's it's like a buddy system. If you know someone that draws or someone that is an artist and you have a way of, you know, you, maybe you went to the same art school. Um, maybe it was a friend that he somehow got connected with a, a art program, things like that. Because usually if you're doing it long enough, you're going to know there's a lot of different schools and, and different companies that you can kind of look up if you're starting from scratch I would just say go online start looking up companies and then look for people that are not like you know um, not the how do you say it not the people that are at the very tippy top because more than likely they don't they, they're working on something and they're already making money if you can get if you're good enough uh, they will they will come to you so if you submit something and they think hey this is something different um, they may come to you and be like hey what do you you know what is your interest what are you looking what are you trying to do and trust me anytime people can make money off of your art um, they will do it <laughs> they will uh, definitely do that but yeah I would if you're like in the middle of nowhere and you're starting out and you're you're trying to um, you know get yourself out there and get known I would definitely say enter a lot of contests that are online. Um, the program that I use is only Moho. I do have the other ones. Uh, I do not. Uh, let me not say that. The, the other ones are good just based on what you're doing. A lot of the projects that are big projects, they got software that this is the only thing you can kind of use. And a lot of it is already adapted to how they set up and, and they do their sequencing and you know get, get all their artists on the same page uh, some of them are kinda lucky because they do have the ability to do a lot of uh, in at home now that you can kinda link up uh, bigger companies are not gonna do that they're not gonna put any of their major stuff out on any kinda server that anyone can get to so that I, some companies have that security but a lot of them if it's really like a, a real big big project and you know they're worried about people stealing their ideas or their storylines stuff like that um, you may not be able to work remote so but you can always ask it's always a possibility what else what was the other question uh, uh, sponsorship sponsorships I don't know you can find those you can find people that are inter interested in art there's a lot of celebrities there's a lot of sports teams or people that are interested in cartoons stuff like that you could kind of see that on their web page you have the option whether or not to put yourself out there by contacting them or contacting their people most of the time that's difficult unless you know someone um, most of that stuff is done I would say a lot of it from what I see if you're in that Asian market most of that they control that as far as uh, your animation so if you do have an uh, more of a um, idea person I have things that I can like the, I, I know what exactly what it needs to look like I know what it what the feel is to it and I'm able to put different pieces together for a, a vision of wh what I think the story should be and to me from just my opinion you don't have to be the best artist because everyone has their own style so don't uh, someone's asking me this before don't ever let anyone tell you your style is not you know what I mean different styles is, is a, a good thing what I've seen mostly and it's been proven you don't have to take my word for it is if you have a story a real good story doesn't matter what the artwork looks like um, just set out there's a lot of artwork out there where you see these stick figures and 
it's got a lot of views um, there are some shorts that those what I call those emotional shorts things that you see where you know, people are you know the, the, it may be for a cause or something like that there are um, a lot of those and the artwork doesn't have to be super super great there's there's a lot more but yeah don't I mean if someone's saying hey you need to change your style or change like the and again it it's 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 gonna be based on your perspective when you go to these other markets the the way they're telling stories if it's like a um, a drug I don't know how do I say this without sounding a lot of the artwork that you see on these major projects there's most of the time it's done by uh, a very large company and most of the, those projects all the characters are is even if you're going hey I want to watch this show and then you switch to another you know show uh, a lot of that stuff is similar the only one I've really seen that were and I think they were working on it for a long time was the the arcane that visual kind of style and and maybe a long time ago they were I don't know back in the Disney days they probably would look at that like what is this you know what I mean I think it took did it take them years let me see how long did it take to create arcane I think someone told me six years I don't know if I'm wrong about that I think it was six years uh, oh right here uh, no spoilers arcane did not actually take six years to make what do they mean actually let's click on the reddit basically started working on RK six years ago but it did not take that much time to make the first episode was fully or mostly fully completed five years ago that's weird after we're working on that's the guy's name I'm gonna pronounce it we're working on it for about two years they had to wait for riot to greenlight future production why would they have to wait well again this I mean again that style I really never I, I, I think I did see it on one of the love uh, robot I forgot don't beat me up on Netflix I think I saw that style there what would they be waiting for wait for riot to green light future production the animator doesn't know the reason for the hesitation <laughs> yeah hesitation was finding people that believe in this that's a lot of it that's that's the heartache part right like there's so many talented people out there and then if you're a one of one and I, I'm saying one of one in this sense in that a lot of people that art style not a lot of people seen it before even though visually it looks beautiful you're really stepping outside of all of those other forms of styles of animation that you see on every cartoon channel they are very similar and a lot of that went to that market where um, there is so like that Asian market where you you see that the all the animators might be the Asian um, and then they have uh, voiceovers that you know but a lot of these American based ones where they're writing that story they're using those the, that Asian market artwork uh, a, a lot of the time I think Sweden would probably be the only other one um, what was the other what was the other the Swedish what was might not be Swedish uh, 
movie. No, it was holiday movie. Movie made in no animated sorry type it with one hand gotta be here oh it's the first one there there it is what was this called <laughs> funny even when I look at this stuff this style here it's all that similar it looks like it's all similar I think that was Rise of the Guardians. Mm. Arthur's Christmas. Tokyo Godfathers. I've never seen that. Oh, I've seen that. Snowman. That was one that was, uh, I don't know, I think this would be right here. If you look at the artwork on this one as well, it had its own style. This uh, this won a lot of awards um, just for the feeling of it. And then I also think because of the, the soundtrack that was added to it. Okay, yeah, this was it. So Claws. This was what I remember. It, this style here, um, I don't know. I don't think this is the Asian market style. Yeah. Oh, the old Charlie Brown Christmas. This also, this guy, I should call him this guy because <laughs> like I know <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, but Tim Burton style, would this have worked? Like, it was, would this have been one of those 101s? Uh, so for the person that was asking me about style and changing anything, I I, I mean, I wouldn't change. If, if you really feel like this is how you want to tell the story, I wouldn't change anything. And again, to me, it's just going to go back to that, that idea. It's just going to be based on the story, not based on, you know. But then you could get lucky. Maybe someone you know really says, oh, this is a great idea. And then you can kind of push it forward. But I recommend, uh, you know, joining any kind of board where there are other uh, artists that talk to other artists. There's a lot of those things like that. Uh, and just like hook up with people that draw in your area. Uh, there's a lot of message boards, people that, you know, be safe, of course. <laughs> uh, but of course, there's a lot of different groups out there animated groups stuff like that so that would be uh what i recommend and if you're young don't do that <laughs> i'm talking about you know adult um you know or if you do do that make sure you talk to your parents about you know hey you want to join a group like that there are a lot of them but some of them might be older groups so if you can find uh the person that was asking me this i think they were on a little bit of the uh the younger side so just be careful but you know there's a lot of ways to do it that way as well and it doesn't matter if you are drawing uh, someone drawing stick figures or whatever it is it doesn't matter don't let anything discourage you because you might be that one-on-one artist 
out there that changes the way we see uh, animation and it doesn't have to always be perfect that was you know a lot of um, I don't know I should if you go to any kind of art school there's a lot of different teachers there that have a, a way that they see things and sometimes it's very hard for them to see your arts especially if it's not something they're used to or a style that they understand uh, a lot of those you know that Disney type or that that archetype just that same Japan, uh, Japan animation kind of style where it's just everywhere it's like if you watch one you you seen them law and that's not sacrilege I'm talking about the the ones that are not good <laughs> I'm talking about the stories that are just the same story you know oh these are some heroes and they're gonna you know all of that stuff I get it I understand people are scared to make different choices but that's what happens when you have a market is like oh if you seen one I remember when I first started seeing the and it, uh, Japanimation or whatever you guys want to call it um, it was new to me so everything that I saw was like awesome but when you start watching a lot of them my opinion is it is a recurring theme on a lot of those and the reason why I was excited when I first started seeing them was because I've never seen it before so everything was cool I don't know if that makes sense, but everything was like, wow, you know, so there you go. So, yeah, don't change your style for anyone, you know, just to me, it goes back to, like I say all the time, the story and and, and whatever your uh, story is based on wherever you are in the world or region or whatever it is, it'll be something that no one else can tell because you're the one that lived it or maybe a family member that lived it right no one else can tell that story and that's what would make it interesting that happens a lot on uh like when i watch netflix where you, you i can't remember it was about a lady that was making honey or something like that but it was um part of the region i've never seen before so pretty interesting because it's like oh this is not what I'm used to this is totally different so there's that what else I think that's all the ones I remember that were at the top of it don't change your, your style I know that was one uh, trying to get things projects made uh, on the on the projects main part as well just do it and put it online the software that uh, is available now like moho like I use it's really really simple to use it if you just kind of work at it I want to say simple but most of it's very simple that's why I'm, I try to do as uh, many of the tutorial parts as I can to make you understand that it can look very good very good and when you put it on YouTube especially if you can get it to uh, like a ve that vector format it will I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent it'll look just like it but trust me and, and you know the software is just getting better and getting closer and closer to whatever you put on that YouTube it could people will watch it if it you know visuals are clean enough sometimes that doesn't even matter as well just again that goes back to your style and what you think and story that's it Oh, and then um, playground. So playground. I think I, sh I have a lot of videos about playground. Uh, whatever you type in there, if you're not good at drawing things or you have an idea of something in your head 
that you want to try to get across playground does that for you and if you're good at storytelling playground can be very helpful for you when it comes to uh, the drawing aspect of it because you can do 2d uh, it will create 2d animated images that you can play around with and I think I'll do another one on that where I'll show you how you can just pretty much do anything almost anything it won't animate it for you but it'll if you say you're doing like a storybook type of thing it will be very helpful like I guess if you're good at storytelling and you make want to make a ch uh, children's book things like that and it's free Oh, and uh, Inkscape is also free. Um, that the one I use mostly. It's uh, also very free. I'll try to do another one on uh, coming up on that. Go over that a little bit more than I did before. But yeah, if you have any ideas, like I always use uh, the playground, it's an AI platform, it just basically creates images. Or if you have an image that you draw, it can mimic it. And it's good for it'll also so not really a puppet tool, but say you have an image and you you, you push it into uh, the playground AI, it'll create your back front side for um, an image that you draw so say you draw an image and you say oh man how do I draw the side or the back and da 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 right uh, playground will do that for you all you gotta do is request it in the the guide there and it'll do this it'll get you all set up there and backgrounds are awesome on there that's what I mostly use it for. Play around with this later. So what else was I? Oh, I was going to break this up. Um, so I'm going to break this thing up. I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to finish all that stuff later. But I'm going to break this up real quick. Show how. And that's going to bother me. I'm going to fix that now. And for everyone that doesn't want to hear all the talking, I'm gonna I'll put timestamps in there to where it'll get right to. Uh, I don't even know. so on YouTube. It's sometimes I, there's names on there. I don't it takes a while to fill them up. But on this one, we're basically gonna be doing a breakdown of a character for uh, movement. Um, so we're gonna separate the head, the body the arms and the, the the feet and create a walking cycle using moho so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this all up and isolate everything and then we're gonna import it into moho and I'm gonna show you a very quick way to uh, animate a walking character by replacing uh, your PNG files with the the puppet that's created by Moho. Uh, Moho has a um, a tool. What it does is you can create these. It's it's just a basic character, but you can create these base. 
I take that back. Someone else told me don't see it like that. You can create any character you want in Moho. If you have time enough to just throw art out and do the shadow and, and things like that, it's just what it'll you could technically um, I'm not like a super great artist, but you can make it look exactly how you want it to look. And it looks professional. Um, it's just time consuming because there's a lot of like when you're doing shadow, you're doing a lot of other things. It's kind of hard for me. And that's the key word. Me. To make it look how I want it to look by drawing from scratch. When I draw from scratch, I usually have an outline of what I need to look like and then I'll draw a basic thing and then I can go to um, playground the AI and then I'll put in my descriptors of what I want the character to look like based on my drawing and it will draw me side front uh, it'll basically do this so if you draw say you draw front facing character and you're like uh, playground AI you go there and you say hey I need a side view of someone looking curious in a jumpsuit right and it will take your art that you in, in you uh, upload into it and it will create that for you so it's just basic characters uh, and you can draw all of them if you like if you're not a good artist you don't have to but most of the things I have are in my head of what I want everything to look like so that's why I use it but I'm not we're not gonna sit here all day and do all of this outlining and stuff like that I'm gonna go ahead and get right do it we're gonna cut this up here and um, I already have Inkscape open and I use Inkscape for basically setups. Uh, the, the preferences here, uh, you can put whatever render size you want. Um, so when I'm doing any like a project, I have all my pieces already separated and I keep them in here and I can have as many as I want, uh, you know, I, all my breakdowns, all of the, everything that I that I need, it, you can it's enough space to put it all in here. Uh, oh, I was talking about this in YouTube. I hate doing these these covers because it takes me a very long time. I do them from scratch, but then if I can, I'll change these out to like so because the stuff that I'm putting on on the on the site where actually people know. Um, what I'm doing I don't need to do all of these things I just label them but on YouTube um, they were telling me that you should have something where it, yeah you're noticeable so I, I try to do a like a basic you know and I try to make them all look the same so where if you click on it uh, you'll know it's coming from me the other thing, oh, okay, the other thing on YouTube, um, I will start doing audios, I apologize, the ones I, well, most of them I put up, I don't do that, because most of them are, basically, it's, it's kind of chronicling my work on certain things that I'm working on, projects, um, also for advertisers or people that are going to invest in whatever you're doing uh, you want some kind of record of what you've done over time so say for instance you do have someone that's backing you someone that's saying you know hey um, basically it'll it'll be a, a drawn out it can be a contract but basically what you're going to do is you're going to go to them and say hey I have this idea for a story I'm an artist uh, I want to go ahead and put this out on a major platform. Uh, can you help me with that by giving me money? <laughs> That's basically, where, and if they believe in you or if they say, okay, show me what you got. You want to be able to show them something as far as a storyline or maybe a first scene or second scene. And I'm not saying this to um, anyone that, that this is for basic 
knowledge, not for people that are uh, rich and you've already have magazines and whatever you're doing out there as far as uh, production and promotion. When you go up to anyone or you're looking for representation, they're gonna be they're gonna ask you, oh, okay, you're an artist, okay. How much of the story have you written? What is this story supposed to look like? All of these different things. If you're a first time presenter, you're not going to be getting paid. <laughs> right. You you have to kind of put yourself out there. Unless they believe in there's some people that do believe in you and will represent you and be like, hey, this is the next big thing. You got like any any kind of art. But you have to grab them first and a lot of this stuff be tr transferring to YouTube is going to be that uh, because when you someone that doesn't know who you are and they don't know your website and they don't know anything uh, I was told that you should be going to YouTube and you should be putting features on YouTube and have that you know more than likely that he was telling me you're not gonna make money on YouTube some people have, but I don't think it'll be something that'll work for wh what I'm doing. Um, but what I what I, I did like was this. There's an artist that uh, it's someone I know, but it's it's someone that's how do I say this? He's got his foot in the door, and he did that by putting a uh, I don't know a feature on YouTube, and I think it was like ten minutes. And when he put that up, it took a while to get traction, but once it did, a lot of people saw the story. And he was telling me a lot of uh, represent representers were, were coming to him for, you know, maybe a a a feature where, you know, you'll get paid, but it's not gonna you're not gonna become rich overnight. But then they're willing to talk and and, and work with you on on doing another, you know, short or maybe a series. Uh, the people with all the money are the people that are doing the series. Those are going to be people that are in a, already in the business. And what they do is they go in, they find whoever they know. Uh, most of the time, that's why you'll see a lot of the same uh, artwork and coming from a lot of those companies. And it'll be a whole nother different kind of comedy cartoon. And there's lots that you don't see that fail. But they make money when they do those. There's a budget, so whenever they have an uh, artist or a, a production company that was successful before, they give them money to do <laughs> to it again, and it doesn't always work. Uh, I don't want to like. I guess you could look at the Cleveland show as something that didn't work, but people liked it. Uh, but it probably didn't work to the you know to the amount of money that they wanted to get back so I think that might have been an issue there but you see a lot of them it, that wasn't the only one there's a lot of different ones that where you have animators that come from major uh, productions that will break off and, and do their own thing because they know someone and you know they pay them for just coming up with those those you know I don't, I, I, can't remember if it's like a spotlight thing but basically what it is is they'll be like okay you go to them and you and they're gonna say okay uh, you worked on this thing okay what are you doing independent of this person and then what they'll do is they'll have a short or something right and and maybe the person with the money is going to look at that and and, and make a determination whether or not they're going to give you money to work on something else and they're hoping like you're hoping that it's going to be successful like maybe the you know show that you were on before or work with other people and a lot of times it's usually I wouldn't say backed by the same people but it the, uh, how do I say this so say you had an artist that has a you know became successful with um, a show he has friends that maybe he's worked on that show for, I don't know, five, six years. We'll just make it that short, right? All of those people, if the show's successful and they get new seasons, they make money. Then your friends that come to you and say, hey, I have an idea about this type of show. And the artwork is going to pretty much stay the same. 
right? That's what I hear uh, that happens a lot. Someone's working on a show for a long time. Maybe they, you know, they grovel or, or hey, I want, I have this idea. And he hooks them up with his representation and they start pitching, you know, hey, this is not that main you know comedy sitcom thing that you uh, have but it's coming from the same people and we trust them and that's how a lot of that happens if, if you they trust the person that comes to them saying okay well you think this guy has a shot is he funny does he is what are the drawings all of that stuff most of the time it's just story and when you when you first start learning about it and getting into it, a lot of times you'll be surprised at how many things that don't make it. <laughs> and there's a lot of uh, places you can see that kind of stuff. Like there's some websites I think they're dedicated to it, but a lot of them where you would be like, "Oh, this is made by this person." Okay, great, and it'll be another hit. And it's not another hit. It's just you know, characters look the same, storyline a little different, based on some kind of. Um, all right, now we're in the junkyard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same writers, because those are the guys they've been hanging out with for the last six years on the popular show. So they're friends, and of course, you're going to need help. And you need someone you trust, again, staying in-house. So it's very hard to be like someone new. Um, and that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to... I'm, I'm someone new. <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea in my head and, uh, and some people understand exactly what I'm trying to do but now they're like hey you need to start uh, put it on YouTube that'll that'll be that's how you can tell uh, the market will like what you're doing so, because this idea is so different from everything else we want to make sure that it it's gonna work so that's what and, and when I thought about it, I was like, oh, that's kind of weird, but they're not going to pay me. <laughs> but if I become su successful on my own, then they'll come around later. But yeah, that's that's where we're at, folks. But um, yeah, so a lot of uh, a lot of it to me, it's going to be based on you pushing yourself and, and you having an, uh, a lot of um, drive to do it. Because a lot of people are not going to understand exactly what you're doing. And when you're different from what they're used to, a lot of times they're not going to take a chance on something like that. You know, Unless your parents run a production company. <laughs> and that's not a dig at anybody. It's just me. Making an observation. But yeah, so for anyone that style wise, probably beat that into the ground. Stick with your style. Don't let people, you know, change what you have in your head. Because once you do that, it's no longer a unique. It's now something blended with what they want. And then when it fails, right? Hopefully they won't blame you. Because a lot of times they're gonna be like, hey, we, you know, they'll give you the deal, but they'll be like, hey, you need to use these artists. <laughs> they will tell you that. They will be like, no, you, well, we like your art style, but hey, can we change a little bit of it so we can get this person to work with you? And of course, if you're making money, are you gonna say no? <laughs> Be like, oh, no. Oh, well, why not? Well, I want to do everything my own. I have a feel for what I need to look like, and that's the thing that they they hate when you say that. And this is me probably complaining a little bit here on on this. This is going to YouTube, so probably no one will see it. So, but man, they do not like you telling them no <laughs> about anything <laughs> like and then they give you that thing like well you're a new artist and you know you know we 
we do have the backing and da 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 da. We like what we see, but you know, we have these people that we work with. <laughs> okay, great. Well, they listen to me, a new person that said more than likely no, but you know, we could talk to them. They may not understand and that and they well, this is the one thing that's good about that, right? Things that they know that can would be I feel would be helpful would be like, okay, what are some of the things, the mistakes that you've made, right? That would be one. But as far as the, the, the overall art and the way that I want it to look, stuff like that, that's hard for me to kind of break away from. So I you have you know, I, so I'm having to learn to kind of like just go with the flow with some of it, right? Because it's just so hard because the idea in your head, you know, if you can, in if you can succeed in getting that that feel that you have over, it'll be one of those ones. But it's just having someone you convincing them that you know exactly what you're doing I think I, I, I re, uh, it's almost like music in a way right there's certain people that you there's a certain kind of I guess you could say you have a good taste in music right and you're able to identify exactly what that sound is and exactly what that's like right and you feel like you're the only one that has it or maybe you're that person that oh this is going to be wait until everyone else starts to you know listen to this thing and you've been right a lot when it comes to doing that so that's the only example i can give like it would be like you have this feeling and when other people hear or see what you're doing it's going to be so different but so good because you it's something that's in you where you're able to see that type of thing it's almost like a I guess a producer when they hear a certain person there's a feeling that you get like that it factor kind of thing and, it, and it's hard to I would you say I guess put a mirror up to it where other people see exactly what you see because most of the time those people that are have the money they don't they don't get it and you have to convince them and then what happens once you convince them then you see it like they try to duplicate it like 12 times and it doesn't work stuff like that that's the feeling that I get when when you're trying to convince people of this you, you, like hey trust me just do it my way I know you don't understand what I'm doing but please just listen to what I'm telling you and I understand you want to make money and if I can if I can get this over the way you will be a very happy person because most of the time they want to make the money the artist is the person that's you just want to get it out there and show people like hey I got this story in my head but most of the time those money people they don't you know I would say that some of them believe in you but it's 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 never like oh a hundred percent because they've seen so many things go wrong that they thought was gonna go right so and you have to you have to kind of deal with their errors in a way like things oh, I thought I thought this guy was the one <laughs> and then they blame you because you come in there and maybe you are, are the one but they're like I don't know I, I thought the other guy was the one and uh, it makes me nervous because I thought he was the one and he turned out to be the worst thing in the world so but then you're blamed for that in a way because now they're nervous and to me, I always think in my head, well, maybe you're not good at seeing <laughs> what's going on. That you you just don't have that that thing where you can understand exactly what what I'm doing. 
and it's hard to get them to understand it. It's hard to get them to get it. To it, I always said this before, like with my friend when we pick music. It's like to it's too late, and by that time the person comes back, they're like, oh, I remember when I was the only one that was listening to your music, and now everyone's listening to it, and <laughs> like so. <laughs> And I think that's why a lot of those those production people, like they have the same people. Like if they there's certain people out there, I think there's a guy like that in like music, like rap music. I think he has a beard or something. Like there's some people out there that uh they see it and then they know. And it's a it's a weird thing. It's like they're the ones that can do it. And they, they do it with all kinds of different genres of music, sometimes clothing styles like they they see it that one of one kind of thing and they have the eye for it and and they you know they're able to to, to kind of listen to I, I i can't remember what what that documentary was i was watching but the guy he, he's uh he's in the uh like uh, the rap uh, I don't know if he's a producer or, or he's just like a guru that people come to him and say, "Hey, you know, what what do you think about this thing?" All right? There's only there's a couple of people that have that thing where they can they can do that. It's rare, but when when it's there, whenever they you hear, "Oh, that person has an idea." You trust it after a while cuz I think he's good at picking like songs and things that Maybe the artists think that are good, but or not things like that. It's, it's got to be people like that out there. Let's see. Can't remember what color I was using. Sorry, I'm almost done with this, and then I'm, I'll, I'll cut this up, and we'll we'll get it into uh, moho for you. Be one second. Oh, uh, the person that keeps asking me about why I'm drawing in um, this format, because it, it it's not a clean format. I think I went over this before. Once I draw this, I bring it into here. I don't know. Can I make a... Let's see if I can do something real quick. Uh, I don't know. Well, we can use this. And this, it basically vectorizes it for me. So you'll go to Trace Bitmap. All these different options are available. All of these will change how this ends up looking uh, but you want to click color scans colors kind of like the same thing so I'm looking at this how many colors do we think it has okay we know it's more than five yeah, probably with the shading and everything like that it's probably more than ten so this is what that is so the higher you go up with here it's going to do a separation breakdown for you of all the different colors and scans is kind of like the same thing. Remove background. What remove background does, it removes all the white. So, anything under eyes, stuff like that. All right. And then you click on the, the PNG here. And to vectorize it, you just click here, OK. Depending on how many colors, it may take like five seconds or so. There we go, and it will break down all the different things you want to break down. Now, this can be time consuming if you have a lot of colors because basically it's very clean lines and it'll look very good when you do do your animation. Um, so once you do have uh, most of my characters, once I do vectorize them, it takes me a long time, I won't lie, to uh, 
uh, get it painted out sometimes I do do an outline and I will just use I will just use the outline and then I'll come in and just color it but um, that's the separation here and it can be time consuming but a lot of this stuff here is is really helpful when it comes to making adjustments because uh, I can make adjustments based on like the area so you want to smooth something out uh, you can see all of these nodes here so they're all kind of square nodes and then you can change the nodes to whatever you like so round it so, right? makes it a little bit uh, faster whenever you want to go in and you know fill everything in um, but I don't recommend you uh, like if you're just playing around with stuff I don't recommend you doing this because it's going to take a very long time to color and get everything the way you want it the good thing about this is once you get everything all set up and I've got it cut up into the puppet and everything like that uh, I can keep it forever so a lot of times I will draft something out right and um, it's time consuming I won't lie but after it's done and the way it looks it's worth it uh, and then the other thing is you uh, a lot of it depicting on what you, whatever you're doing um, but a lot of it is once you see the end results of what what you put together as far as you getting it vectorized and everything looks so very clean and and, and you know nice and everything like that it's worth it so um, but I always draw in paint and the reason why is because uh, I don't I can sketch from hand but I can't really get the lines that I really like and paint is good for that so whatever line I need however light I need to make those lines um, it's just a lot faster for me to, to use this and it's also faster for me doing any kind of outline as well um, so say I you do take the uh, or say I get um, draw it up and I get uh, the AI to create an image for me uh, from one of my drawings uh, the AI will clean it up a little bit but it's not going to clean it up to the way you know professional prof to me uh, I like a very not thick black outline uh, I would say <sighs> like one or two for me it's usually OB2 it just depends on you know how I'm feeling that day. Sometimes I, I like to go thin on things like flowers or um, I don't know animals if there's any kind of animals that are drawn out but usually with the character I usually like a thicker line not always but sometimes but yeah that's why um, I draw here and not from if you if you're one of those people that can draw uh, from hand or whatever I know they have pen tools I've seen them all uh, I just it's more comfortable for me to do it this way and then if I uh, you know it is more time consuming in some cases but not always um, but I like the shading elements of it it's just a lot quicker um, and you know I can also do which is my favorite thing um, when I get layers and I put a layer here on top I can go here and then whatever line I want to make right so we make this a little bit thicker and I'm not gonna make it that thick we'll just use the example so we got this here a little around it right and let's do that here here like so now since this is on top right I'll get a new layer put in between these two so when I go in and do coloring I can make adjustments as I like so this color is a little bit too light for me so 
more than likely to darken that up. Um, but you also need, you know, your shadow and all the other stuff that goes with it. So you click here, and I can go and change. Oh, I'm gonna make sure that it's normal. Okay, yeah. And I can go in here and change how light I need it to be when I'm coloring. And it's a trans it's a fast transition. So just that, right? Go and color. Like so. Okay. And so since I have the dark outline on this layer here on top. When I come in here in the middle layer, I can just color without worrying about messing up or getting like that extra outline from filling because I know that that black is uh, on top. So I don't, it won't make me outline on the outside of it. it, keeps me in those lines. And then you can go back to this layer here. The other thing I like that it does is this so let's get that reinforcement back with the darker lines make sure I'm the right one here yep we are wait yeah so this one and let's go back to one And remember, all that shading and everything like that is underneath everything here. Whatever I do here, I can change it all. So if I want to make it darker or lighter, right and, and then there's no mistakes and then also when I f if you do fill in use uh, red and darker red so when I do fill in here I can make adjustments there as well so if I'm worried about a, a look or a color right And I want to go in and I want to kind of play around with what I think the color should be. Wait, have that wrong one. Okay, yeah. All right, so now that on top, right, so this layer here is where everything's on top. And then there's another one here where this may be your shadow or whatever. So when you do a new one, which is here, all the shadow is, everything that you do here is gonna be covered up with those other ones, right? So, if I wanna change the, the template just a small bit here, and go down a little bit more. All those other things, it's not gonna be really affected by what you do here. Right, so say we keep that color, right? Which I'm not going to do that, but we can also do the effects, which is blur, right? And we can make it as blurry as we need it to be, but it allows you to do all kinds of different tints, and it's so fast. The transitions. So I do have the uh, other program. <laughs> I call it. I do have all the Adobe's. Uh, this one I don't really use that much. I, I do use it sometimes. Sometimes I'll use it for vector because it does have the same thing that uh, Inkscape has, where you can use it. Um, but I don't really. I, I tried to use. Uh, other <laughs> um, products but it's hard for me to get used to it 
because the transitions are not that easy. So to be able to go from, you know, this one line and I'm able to, you know, make whatever adjustments I need, you know, in the color, right? Whatever adjustments that need to be made, it's, it's just so much faster for me. And then, you know, I, okay, you like that one here. And then also just the outlining as well. Right, so if I make mistakes on anything, or uh, sometimes I'll use this effect and go back. If I'm trying to get a window to look a certain way, so say that's a tint, and you would get those like those window lines, like so, kind of translation. Or if I want to make this say for like um, I, like you see those construction gloves that have maybe some kind of different markings based on the gloves so and that is a thing like when you're I don't know if anyone's worked on a construction site before but a lot of times is the gloves will be dex is uh, designated based on you know what you know maybe you're dealing with chemicals or whatever right so whatever it is um, but it allows you to do all kinds of manipulation with the color without worrying about making mistakes because then you can you know pull all those things out that you need to pull out and you know you already have the outline that's on the top so you're not really concerned with um, but it allows you to play with color in a way um, that the other ones can but the transitioning so, and when I say transition I mean moving from one tool to another it's not the same so once I got used to this here it just gives you a lot of different options and again most of the time I'm not coloring in this and uh, using this a lot I'm just looking at the idea of it to uh, I might keep that for that glove um, most of the time I keep this as simple as as you know this and then when I get it into here, uh, and that's the reason once I keep it kind of simple because when we when you do do the let's go back to that trace map here. So when you do um, have the tr trace map, you don't have to have that many colors. You can look at this and be like, okay, yeah, one, two, three is probably I don't know. Gray, two types of gray, three types of gray, glove. I don't know. Tops maybe what twelve, maybe a little bit less than twelve. So when you go in there, and and a lot of times I'll do it anyway, but I'm looking for the color that I want. When you come from this, and then you get it into here, you can manipulate the color a lot better. So um, a lot of times in paint, even though I like the way these, I can transition from tool to tool to tool, I'm not doing all my coloring in here because it won't, it won't look clean. It, it won't look uh, as smooth. It's, it's very blotchy. Uh, there's ways to do it, but it, it'll be very blotchy. So I already know the basic colors I'm going to use and I keep in that theme of all the, what the colors are going to be. So when I do get it to this vector mode, um, I can get all those little, you know, the nuance, the under the arm shadow, uh, movement shadow, if I'm going to have it on there, uh, hair color will be a lot more uh, detailed, things like that. And um, Inkscape is my best friend when it comes to that. So.